Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to explore how Sudan Red binds and stains different lipids. Sudan Red itself is red and it is hydrophobic. Therefore, it will bind to any non-polar substances such as fats. I've been using this in several labs and wanted to explore how it stained different oils and different fats. To make up the solution, we created a half a percent weight by volume Sudan Red 4 solution dissolved in 95% ethanol. I cut a piece of Wattman filter paper and then placed a drop, a single drop, of each sample onto the filter paper. I then allowed it to dry by air. Some protocols state it's good to use a hair dryer. I found with the fats, using the hair dryer just blew around the fats and made for a messy piece of filter paper. So for this, I just let it air dry. Let me explain all of the drops on the filter paper right now. You don't see it, but in the top left hand corner, I did place a drop of water. It did air dry and that's why you don't see any circle there. Moving from left to right on the top row, we next have a drop of vegetable oil. The bottle said the source was from soy. To the right of that, we have canola oil, followed by grapeseed oil, and then olive oil. Moving down to the far left on the bottom, we have a drop of peanut oil. To the right of that, we have a drop of sunflower oil. The next three drops look different. That is because they were solids at room temperature. The first drop is butter, the one right in the middle. To its right, we have a drop of margarine. And finally, a drop of lard on the far right. To liquefy them, I used a microwave. There were some interesting results here. For instance, the lard, when it was a liquid, was clear, which was a bit concerning. You can see when I dropped these onto the filter paper, they did not absorb and diffuse into the filter paper like the oils did, which is why they don't appear to be quite the same diameter. But I did one drop of each of the samples. To stain the lipids, we incubated the filter paper with the dried lipids on it in a dish of the Sudan Red solution. Take care when working with Sudan Red. It is a known carcinogenic substance. So please wear gloves and make sure you wash your hands when you are done. We're going to let it sit in the Sudan Red for five minutes. I will move my light out of the way. As you can see, there's quite a bit of reflection coming off the Sudan Red. And then I will speed it up so we're not waiting here for five minutes. I will speed this up to 10 times normal speed. When incubating, make sure the entire filter paper is submerged. Sometimes some edges might not be fully submerged. I also like to move around the filter paper to make sure that all parts of the filter are coming in contact with the solution. When the five minutes is up, I will then rinse it in a solution of 95% ethanol. Why 95% ethanol? Well, the Sudan Red was made up in 95% ethanol. This will hopefully wash away any of the Sudan Red that is attached to the filter, but is not attached to a hydrophobic substance. Those areas that contain lipids or fats will remain red. As I pull the filter paper out of the Sudan Red, you can see it has stained quite clearly those little dots of our lipids we added. Again, be careful with Sudan Red. It is a carcinogenic substance. I will now rinse this in my 95% ethanol solution. It is very clear right now, but watch what happens as the Sudan Red comes off of the filter paper. It appears that all of our samples that had oil or fats did turn red. We have our negative control, our water, and there is a slight amount of red there, but very small amount. And that's why you do negative controls. I'm moving around the filter paper in the 95% ethanol solution to try and get off as much as I can, removing the excess Sudan red that is not attached to a lipid. Notice the color of the solution. It's going very red as it comes off the filter paper. We will rinse this off and then we will dry it. And then we'll take a look at each of the spots 
and see if there's a difference between them. Now that we've rinsed the filter paper, let's now air dry it. I'll let it sit here for maybe an hour or so, and we'll see what it looks like when it's all dry. Again, it looks like all the samples have turned a red color. You can even slightly see where the water was dropped as the negative control. And here it is after an hour of drying. Again, you can see the negative control just barely, but everything else looks very red. And everything looks about the same in terms of the oils, and everything looks about the same in terms of the fats. Let's take a closer look and see if we can see any differences between them. This first one on the far left is our water, our negative control. And you can see a slight amount of red, but for the most part, it is white. Here we have our vegetable oil looking very red. In the middle of the screen is our canola oil. Looks about the same. We have our grapeseed oil. Once again, looks exactly the same. Here's our olive oil. This one, the diameter is not so large. When making observations, try and find any differences between things. Our peanut oil, it appears to be a little redness in the center, more than the others. Our final oil, sunflower oil, looks just like the others. Now we have our three fats. We have butter. And as you can see, it looks slightly different, more concentrated. Why? It didn't absorb and diffuse into the filter paper. Here we have our margarine. I wasn't sure what to expect here, but it looks just like the butter. Finally, we have our lard. It appears to be more concentrated to the center as opposed to the other ones. From the results of this little experiment, it appears Sudan Red stains all of the oils about the same. I was hoping for a bit of a difference between them, but to me, they all look pretty much the same. The butter, margarine, and lard which were solids room temperature, they do appear different. But between the three of them, they pretty much look the same as well. Not quite the exciting result I was looking for, but sometimes that's the way it is in science. I will use the results from this experiment and apply this to assessing the levels of lipids in milk products. I'm hoping that the Sudan Red will be able to identify different concentrations of lipids in different milk and milk products. I'm going to do a six-part series on examining the composition of different milk and milk products, things like 35% cream, 2% milk, oat milk, cashew milk, and try and determine the different levels of protein, sugars, and of course, lipids in those. I will add a link at the end of this video to the first video in that series. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time.